Well, Shalom, and welcome to Kurt Landry Media. I am so excited. This is going to be a great hour. Please hit a click on there. Tell your friends to watch. Go ahead and hit a share on this B Live that we have from Kurt Landry Media. We have a good friend of the ministry, a very good friend, and he's the CEO founder of, of My Pillow, Mike Lindell. Mike, welcome to the program tonight. It's so good to have you. Thank you so much for making time out of your super busy schedule. Oh, it's an honor to be on your show. This is awesome. Hey, well, we're going to dive right into it. You know, uh, so many of my staff and I've started, started to read your book, What Are the Odds? And I love this book. Look at the cover of this book. This is what you, you were as a crackhead. And now here you are free in Jesus name. So powerful. <laughs> but who would have ever thought when you were this little, this, I tell you what, this picture looks like the one my mom you know, those people used to travel through the neighborhood in a trailer and take pictures of your family. This looks like the one we got, just like that. Yeah, the communion picture. But who would have ever thought that you would be this young man from Minnesota? And then now look at this standing up in front of you, literally tens of thousands of people and speaking on behalf of the most powerful man in the United States, Donald, Donald J. Trump. So Mike, tell me, this is like as one that's written a book to another, what is the main takeaway that you want people? Why would people order your book? And what's the takeaway from your heart? Well, I've spent seven years writing it. <clears throat> and well, basically my whole life, because I kept uh, I kept things that proved all these things in the book actually happened. <clears throat> and um, the one of the things that I want people to take away is it's inspiration and hope. It, it's the hope is the biggest thing. You're uh, this is a, it's a story. I had two parallel tracks going on, uh, entrepreneurship and then addiction, but it's going to show what we are, are all of us with addiction. It doesn't matter who you are. Addiction affects every one of us, no matter how many forks you eat with. And I believe it's not a disease. I believe it's uh, it comes from childhood wounds. It comes from trauma, fatherlessness. Mine was, uh, you, I can track it back to a divorce in 1968 and 69 when doing divorces weren't common. I was the only kid in my school that was from a divorced family. Yeah. I remember those days. Yeah. 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 So, so share with us about, about how you track that back to the, to that divorce and where the trauma started. How, how did you realize well, that, that was like a, a door for you? <laughs> well, I found that out. <clears throat> I realized that probably about as I was writing the book the last two years and, uh, and it was around, it just, Actually, it probably came from the time I was actually saved, which was February 18, 2017. But but I always thought one of the things I thought was strange about me is I couldn't talk to people. I was very if I was strangers, I, I just thought I didn't like small talk. Like when I when I um when I had my bar, I had a bar for 13 years. If someone came in from out of town, if I wasn't high or, or been drinking, I would go wait on them. If there was no one else in the bar, I'd say, um, you know, hold. Or if you need anything else, let me know. And I'd go over here hoping that he would leave or she would leave. And I could take that back to, <clears throat> I look back now and it was, you know, I was afraid of rejection. You can't get rejected if you don't talk to people. Wow. And one of the, th one of the things, I mean, it became clear to me when I quit everything in 2009, a couple months later, I went to a faith-based treatment center and they, they, the seeds were planted then. They didn't. He didn't care about how much I, how many drugs I did, or what I did, or how much. He said, how, "Tell us about your father." And he brought up all these things in childhood. I'm going, what do you want to know about my father? My, you know, my childhood. <laughs> but he brought them all up, and, they, and he, he planted these seeds, like uh, you know, not fitting in in school. Thought I was different, um, and you know, it got up until, uh, like I say, the last three years writing the book. I'm, I, I would get these revelations, going, "Wow." That's why I kind of I can go back in time and explain things. My fear of speaking in public would have been the biggest miracle in history, you know. And uh, you know, I can even look back even on my infomercial. The night before we filmed my infomercial, this this producer came in, and we were doing our reads. He said, "This guy's the worst guy I've ever seen. He's never going to make it on TV." I mean, I, I was all nervous and I couldn't uh, I couldn't talk. And but I think um, you know this is where um, you know. God's shown me 
all these things that everybody goes through wanting to fit in. I think, you know, addiction is just a mask for pain. It can mask for, it can be false courage to, to, to try and, you know, to try and fit in, to not, you're afraid of who you, you know, um, you're not happy with who you are inside or you think you're not. And, uh, and all these wounds and, and, uh, and I believe like even veterans, when they're traumatized, you know, from overseas and stuff and they, they have the same wounds we all have as kids, but as children, but then you get traumatized later and that just magnifies everything that, you know, that happened back then. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I can tell you that at House of David, uh, our staff, you know, you were generously gave get books to the staff there when the last time you were there and everybody's read the book. And, and I'm even seeing here like Patty Merritt says she loves the book. Uh, you know, in our ministry, we have a, a, a prayer ministry where people call in to House of David and we take them into the courts of heaven. And we have actually we actually have people that work full time for us that actually take people through deliverance over the phone lines and on prayer. And right. uh, so we have run into a lot of the same types of situation where there's these father's wounds and and uh, uh, mother's wounds, their past. And, and that when you don't deal with these wounds, then then you're going to fill it in with some type of an addiction. And, and you know, you mm -hmm. deal with it openly. I've heard you speak. It's not just drug and alcohol. It can be addictions to uh, violence and sex and all sorts of different channels of, of where sure. there is uh, uh, excessive be behavior when you don't deal with the core. Would you describe in your book where you share about how – filling those voids in and, and filling in the gap. And uh, do you really believe that Jesus is, and I know the answers to these things, but I mean, why would you believe that faith-based Jesus is the answer to all these addictions? Well, it is in my Melinda Recovery Network, that's what it's gonna be all based on. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> I've been in secular treatment centers back in the eighties to get my license back in the nineties. and. And you go into these treatment centers that are that don't have God, don't have Jesus, and and what they're doing in there is they're going, you know, you're getting more shame. You know, you hurt your children, or your your parents are upset with you, or you you spent all your money. Um, you know, you uh, think where you'd be today if you wouldn't be such a you know an addict or whatever it is, and you get out of there, and and you're you're just like a ticking time bomb, waiting for something to happen, like. Uncle Joe dies or something, and, and then they can say, well, can you blame him? He went back to using. There's nothing there to take the, to, those wounds never got addressed. Those trauma, the, the reason you're an addict never got addressed. And that's where I come to the reality that addiction is not a disease. And you go to these faith-based treatment centers, your Teen Challenge, your Salvation Army, your Union Gospel, these places well, go back in time, you know, and say, okay, what happened? You know, where, where, what are these wounds? And then you get them, you get your heart restored. You get your heart restored. You get forgiveness. You forgive yourself and you replace it with Jesus. And, and now you're coming out there. And when you come out of, when you get your heart restored and you surrender to Jesus, it's not like a country song gone backwards. You don't get your wife back and your kids love you and your, your truck starts. Now you're still going to have things, problems. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a relief giving it all to Jesus and giving and uh, and being able to. Um, it's just like a relief, like you know, especially when you can pray and be proactive in prayer rather than reactive in prayer. Going, God, please get me out of this, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But I know one of the keys is is that you definitely need to surround yourself with new people who are empowered by the blood in the name of Jesus that not only right. know how to speak life into you but teach you to pray teach you the lifestyle and, and to be able to separate you from that which became the bridge for the addiction in, in the first place. Now, I, I do wanna say this for people is that, you know, Mike and I, we've talked a lot about this. We do understand the power of ties in the spirit realm and cleansing ourselves in the course all the way back to the garden, removing generational curses, iniquitous structures in, in, the, in the prayer line. I know our audience, so I'm just saying, it's not, we're, we understand all that, but we do understand right. that if you're going to have uh, an addiction network that is actually bringing results, it's going to have to involve two things. It's going to have to involve the power of Jesus and his name and his blood, but it's also going to have to empower the church. Uh, the mm -hmm. books, the, uh, 
Yeah, in the Bible it says in Ephesians, uh, it says that it's God's intent to make the manifold wisdom of God be made manifest through the church. And so one of the things that the Lindell Network is actually going to empower, and I believe, and Mike believes this as well, and we're totally in agreement on this, I believe this is a key to a, an awakening inside the United States because Mike has a plan with the Lindell Network when he launches this, it's actually going to be launched through all the different denominations and all the different churches so that when the, when the uh, information goes out uh, to really, I think probably one of the number one problems in America, nobody wants to talk about it, but the addiction, particularly even the prescription drug addiction that is happening and the alcoholism that no one wants to speak about, these, these addictions, wouldn't it be something that if the Lord sent an awakening to the United States of America and led you in order to get this treatment into the local churches? So Mike, share about that plan. Well, let's, let's start off with first, which I believe <clears throat> I was talking to, a, this all came about in the last couple of years too. It's uh, that God brought me different pieces of this plan, but I was with uh, this billionaire guy and uh, a couple months ago, and he said, we were, we were sitting there and he says, Mike, you know what? He says, uh, uh, cause I, he was looking out to, maybe to help the Linda recovery network, but he said, he goes, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think we can get this country back to God unless something terrible happens, like the Great Depression. And I said, "What do you mean?" I said, "The Great Depression. They had God, but they were just praying for physical things, food, and so, and whatnot." I said, "We have the best opportunity in history, which is addiction, for the greatest revival ever." And who's looking for hope more than addicts or their families? And everybody's affected right now across the board from four forkers down to no forkers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take people look, people look for as hope. They'll see me all the time and hear my story. And they're going, you know, people tell me all the time, you inspire me, your story. I'm, you know, you're a, uh, um, I quit. I found Jesus um, um, or I quit. You know, all my friends have quit crack. They just had to see me in the, I was sitting in the White House with the president on TV and they go, there is no way there's crack addicts on TV, you know, with the president. And uh, and they ended up all quitting. But with my, but they were, that's a common, a common match. We were all the same age and everything and they see that it could be done. Well, what I'm going to do with my recovery network is I have all these videos and it's going to be an app and a website. You get on it, and I'm going to be your tour guide. And I'm going to go, hey, you guys, put in your age and your addiction. A 20-year-old 20 heroin addict might not relate to a 50-year-old crack addict. So you're going to put in, I'll do, and, and you don't tell your bottoms up here, these two-minute videos. These are all people that have had their hearts restored. They've all people been set free off their addictions. But all they're going to say is what they didn't like about the drug. So if I did crack, I'd say what I didn't like about crack was I didn't like how the paranoia is peeking out windows. I didn't like running out of chore boy. I didn't like um, looking for baking soda. I'm having to cup, cut up a lamp cord if I didn't have any chore boy. I didn't like farming. Um, I didn't like going out and find a spoon in the middle of the night. I mean, these things, only a crack addict knows that I've been there. So now when you put in your age and your addiction, all people your age and they, that, that have been through it, uh, these two minute videos are going to come up and, and then I'm going to come back on. I'm going to go, Hey you guys, do you want what they have? The best help in history is inside this app and this website. Um, you guys, but you guys have to get an access code and they're going to go, well, what do you mean an access code? I said, you're going to go get an access code and there, and they, you can get that at these churches that I have vetted, which are going to be 40 to 50,000 churches. There'll be one near the attic and they're going to go, you're going to go to church next Sunday and you're going to sit there and they're going to give it to you as part of the welcome package, the, the, uh, that access code. Then they can come home, open up this app, and then there'll be all these gates of help in there. That is so, so good. You know, the key about what you just said is so real is, you know, I've, I've, I've done stuff in my life. I've never was a crack addict. So I actually, everything you just discussed, I really didn't have a clue what you're saying because I'm, I'm not, right. I didn't come right. from that culture, you know? So, right. but if you would have come in with some kind of sixties marijuana type, you know, type, right. then, exactly. <laughs> then, then I would have been able to uh, say, okay, I know what you're talking about, but right. that is, the key. I, I think that's the key with yeah, everything. Those are hope. Rabbi, yeah, those are hope. Real thing. 
Yeah. People want people yeah. that have been through it and are, are free from it because if they're not free, why are we even listening to them? But it's, right. it's, Absolutely. yeah, it's the scripture of overcoming him, Satan, by the blood of the mm-hmm. lamb and the word of our testimony and loving our lives not unto death. And that's really what I've seen about you, Mike. You're, you're very generous it, with sharing your life and, uh, uh, and you're very generous with, you know, I've been to social events with you. And uh, in fact, I've, we've traveled together on social events and I'm always waiting and I'm pretty social. I'm a pastor and I, I meet people's needs, but by the time I'm worn out waiting in the car, waiting on you, <laughs> you're still in there taking selfies with all these people. <laughs> I've never seen anybody. Well, that, uh, you, I got over you know, my, I got over my. I wanted a selfie with you. T- tell us yeah, about I, I mean, think you know, about I it. Comes in off the golf course and asks her a selfie with Mike Lindell. Now, now I, why, got, I, got over my, I got over my shyness. I can talk to people now. But <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, I was with uh, I was at the uh, golf course with the and uh, a president. He came in. And he says, "Mike, can we get it? Can I get a picture?" And and uh, he takes his picture and and then he goes. And uh, of course, he always whenever whenever I took pictures with him. But this is a picture he wanted of me which was different. I go, what? Of course we can, you know? And uh, we take this picture and he, and then he goes, everyone, he said, this is my new Minnesota Trump campaign manager. He goes, he goes, Mike, one, yeah. And I, uh, and uh, I was just with him a couple of days ago in the white house again. And uh, we took another picture. <laughs> I know. But, uh, and I asked you if I could use that picture and you never text me back. So it's just lonely in my phone. But it's a oh, yeah, you're all- <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I forgot to send it to you. But yeah, the uh, no, um, you sent me the picture, but you didn't allow me to share it. So now it's just in my phone. So oh, anyway, no, you can share it. We'll talk about that. Oh, absolutely. I, I was yeah, so absolutely. Well, anyway, we're going to we're going to change gears here now. <laughs> Look at this is Mike's book. Listen, you can order this at MyPillow.com. And also they're going to have a promo code number for this this particular uh uh, program. What's yeah, the yeah. Promo use code? promo code. Use promo code Mike seventy seven, and your whole order will ship for free if you buy the book. Okay, okay. So it's promo code oh. at mypillow.com, dot com, Mike seventy seven, and you'll get and free shipping. Mike seventy seven. Yeah. Mike M I K E seventy seven, and they'll ship for free. That's exciting. Yep. Now yep. we we've got uh, we've got about forty five minutes here, but I want to get down to. Uh, we're first of all, we are so excited. I'm just going to give an update. Mike knows this. We have painfully prayed and believed God that Bibi Netanyahu would get the votes to become the next prime minister of Israel. And praise the Lord last night. God answered those prayers and uh, he he lacks one vote. He lacks just one vote of uh, forming a government. He needs 61 in the Knesset. I don't want to explain all that. <coughs> but but he had a landslide victory in Israel. And we just really thank the Lord for that. And it's it's truly a miracle. It's truly an answer wow. to prayer. And a lot of people don't understand like what is attacking the, uh, the whole uh, nation of Israel and the democracy of Israel in the Middle East and what's attacking Trump and vice versa. It's all the same spirit, but I'm going to wow. be honest with you. It's really mostly the same people. These are people that do not want to see uh, uh, Judeo-Christian countries and a democratic, capitalistic countries prosper. They have other agendas. I don't go into all that right now, but they're they're vastly against what we're standing for. And uh, mm-hmm. so anyway, <coughs> excuse me. We do praise the Lord that Bibi Netanyahu uh, worked very, very hard. Uh, and uh, And he will be the next prime minister on March the 17th. He has a trial that will start this uh, accusations of corruption. There is no corruption there. There's a new attorney general. He will be found not guilty. And we praise God that things are moving forward in the United States of America. But we are facing really kind of a kind of a left hook here into the economy with this coronavirus. And uh, uh, but I want to talk to you, Mike, about. Um, I don't understand why I, I personally, I don't, I don't come from this world, but why would Christians be so hung up on not voting for a president 
that is bringing not only deliverables, but what I look for is, it's not personality to me, it's the principles, biblical principles such as pro-life, pro-Israel, <coughs> pro-woman, and, and, and I think he's doing a great job helping, you know, we're both friends with Jack Brewer, your partners with Jack on some projects. He's doing tremendous yeah. uh, help inside the African-American community. But, you know, you, we are very seldom that we get a guest on here that personally knows the president like you do. Share with mm -hmm. us why, why is Mike Lindell like, you know, I mean, you're the CEO and founder of my, of my pillow. Uh, you've got a lot of other things that you can do. I personally know how busy you are. You're, you're on the go all the time. But why are you so driven uh, to be able to, what's the drive within you to stand with Donald Trump at this time and the United States? What, what makes you tick? What, what's the drive with Mike Lindell to, to want to see Minnesota vote correctly and the United States and Donald Trump? What, what is it with you, Mike, that makes that go around? Well, it's a it's a complex answer, but it's uh, um, I'll bring it back to when I came out of crack addiction. When I came out of addiction on January 16, two thousand nine, now I realized I had never voted. I didn't know how politics affect our lives. I didn't know a liberal from a conservative. I didn't know a Democrat. Do you say a word like filibuster? I would go, what? You know, what is, what's that? I didn't know anything about politics, but I did look around me and I seen. Everything had changed, and especially in the next few years after that, with our president giving money to an evil empire, Iran. Um, my friends were all unemployed. Everybody had lost their houses, it seemed like. Uh, my friends that had career job, careers were laid off, laid off. I mean, it was just everything was in shambles. And I'm going, what happened? What did I miss? Well, then it, you get up to 2016, where I... I had a dream actually that I would meet uh, Donald Trump in 2015 and and then he ends up running for president. Well, um, I go, you know what, if this is going to happen, I want to learn. I, so I learned a lot about what, what was a liberal, what was a conservative. And I'm going, wow, everything, all my Christian values fall in this slot, in this lane. And, you know, I was just kind of surprised at how the division of, you know, here's, you know, here's pro-life, here's uh you know, um, when you talk about Israel, here's my, you know, all these things were falling right here, but not necessarily on the, as a Republican thing. I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm going, well, there's stuff over here. You know, it was all kind of mixed, but yet it was divided. Well, anyway, I ended up by a divine appointment. Donald Trump reached out to me and I ended in a, for a private meeting, which was August 15, 2016. Now I walked in there and they said, oh, Mike, you're never going to get a meeting alone. Um, he said, whatever you do, don't tell me you are, you used to be a crack addict and, and they give me all, everyone's giving me all this advice and sure enough, I walk in and I ends up a couple things happened and it was just him and I, I walked in the first thing he says, he says, Mike, are you a Christian? He says, I said, yeah, he says, you always wear your cross on TV. And I said, yes, even though I hadn't done a full surrender, but I, you know, I, I had believed in God and, and he says, uh, he says, I said, yes, Mr. Trump, and this is a divine appointment. And. We started talking about, he was telling me about the jobs and he was, he wanted to know about my pill, how it was making my product here and, and the jobs he was going to bring back. And then we started talking about the inner city. Uh, and, uh, you know, I talked about the things he was going to do there for the black community. Cause so many of my friends were black. And, and then I told him, you know what? I used to be a crack addict. I'm going to have this network. I want to help. You know, I wanted to see where he was with addiction and everything we talked about was like, Talking to a guy like my, like a friend of mine, just a normal guy. I had been in all walks of life. I'd been in everywhere from the worst places in this country all the way up to eating with millionaires. Uh, it's in my book, you know, guys with the, some of the ones that ate with four forks were worse than the guys that uh, the ones that had guns to my head in the streets, you know. Well, anyway, I walked out of there after about a half hour and I said, wow. This, he's going to be the greatest president ever. Well, I didn't stop there because I couldn't believe what I seen. I started asking his employees. I said, is this for real? I said, is this, you know, how does he treat you guys? He goes, he's the best boss ever. And, all, you know, and they were all women and minorities. That was another thing I noticed. And it was like, 
everything you've heard in the news is completely the opposite of what's reality is and and uh, or from from uh, the fake news and that, and I do call it fake because here's what happened after I met him I went back to Minnesota and I couldn't wait to tell my tell the, everyone about Donald Trump you go you guys this this guy what you're seeing and what you're hearing or whatever this guy's a normal guy and he really has common sense he's going to you know I, I had all this I was all in and my my board of directors on my my pillow we got in there and I told him I was going to do a press release and tell everybody I wanted to get the word out and get go all in and uh cuz I I just felt God had picked him for this time a turning point in in the in history and my board so one of the guys said Mike you can't do that you're going to ruin our company and and I said, half the people aren't going to buy pillows. I go, what are you talking about? I was mad, and I walked outside, and and outside the office, and my CMO came out. She says, we didn't get this all this way by you not listening to God. I went back to the board, and I go, we didn't get this way by me not, all this way by me not listening to God. And I um, I did that press release, and I want everybody to listen here. I did that press release, and normally I could say I was walking, especially in 2016, I was all over the airways. And I could say I'm crossing the street. They'd say, hey, Mike, how fast? And they're with their microphones. I did that press release. Not one outlet had me on, and at least six of them sent me emails calling me a racist, calling me all these names. And, I, and I'm going, what did I do? They didn't even know what we talked about in the meeting. That's what was, you know, and here's a guy that didn't know anything about politics, a complete blank slate. Well, that made me want to just go all in. I go, I must be doing something right. So I went all in because it was, uh, it was, you know, he was, the tax that he was getting was that, well, now I'm getting him. And I, what did I do? I just met with him, you know. Well, I went all in and sure enough, he wins when he does win. Then I was attacked even more. The Better Business Bureau took me from an A plus to an F. I oh, was attacked wow. by. You know, I, I mean, I just wiped out uh, to trying to attack my pillow and over over because I ran my ads too long. They said, according to their internal bylaws, by the way, they're not a business. They're a, are they're not a government agency. They're just a, a business, which I I could sit here and badmouth them all day. But for the sake of time, we everybody just I still an F, by the way, that's fantastic. Um, so anyway, then uh, for the next three years here. I'm all in and I'm telling my friends and stuff and go, you guys, it, you know, it just keeps getting better and better all around me. Now what I see three years later, my friends that have careers, not just jobs, um, black unemployment at an all time low, women unemployment, all time low wages are going wages up. Everybody's shocking for position for even in corporate America. You don't have to, you don't have to be the employee that works 60 hours a week now. So the guy above you gets all the credit. You can say, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'll go get a job somewhere else. If you're going to keep treat me like this, it's an employee's market, like never in history yeah. and all these, and all these things. I'm all in because now I know one of the things I can tell you is politics affects our daily lives and our Christianity and every our values, everything more than anything on this planet. It's if you don't have look what they were taking this country. They were taking it. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. The one thing that should be changed, a marriage is between a man and a woman. Call it something else, but you don't call it a marriage. Um, you've got. I had a movie come out with uh, um, Unplanned by with Abby Johnson, a true story. I put that out there. Look at God's timing on that. Um, they were killing or trying to kill babies in New York or the unborn in New York and killing babies in Virginia. I mean, these things are like it, it doesn't even make sense. And so, and what Donald Trump has done is took the the Republican Party and turned it into the common sense party. So you've lost some of the stuff and reshaped this to the, this is the common sense party. And when I meet him, there's no president, there's no person I've ever met that had, he's like a calculator. He's the one of the one people don't know about him. He's a great listener. He's, he's funny and he's the most personal guy. He ca genuinely cares about people individually when you're with them. And he will go around to Rome, take in the information and it, 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 like a calculator, he'll, here's, a, here's a common sense answer, problem, solution. But one more thing added on to that. He knows how it's going to manifest to our daily lives. So every single one of us has benefited. And I could sit and tell everyone, anyone that's not going to, you know, has a problem with Donald Trump, I'm going, okay, look at your, maybe do you have a short memory? 
And then anyone, anyone that's wondering now, it should be the the biggest landslide in history because we went all went in on faith before. Now we have proof of concept. You know, yeah. I could tell you all day on this, Rabbi, about this. I mean, this is it's exciting. We're in the biggest. We are. God gave us grace on November eighth, two thousand sixteen, for the opportunity for the biggest revival, and I mean Christian revival, Jesus in the history in history. Well, we see it on television and, uh, uh, you know, there's like photoshops and it could be like, you know, a good PR, but do they really pray in the white house? Are, are there like, yep. are there Christians that are actually praying? I mean, is it for real prayer or is it just photo, photo op prayer? What's, what's really going on? Do you, are they crying no. out to God? Is it sincere? It's as, it's as sincere as every prayer that you and I have done together. I, I'm, I, I'm friends with Paula White. I've got to be friends with all these people that are in the White House there. I'm one of, I feel I'm one of Ben Carson's best friends, and he's, he's always saying, you know, the president will go, you know, um, Ben, will you lead us in prayer, you know? And, but they're praying over him. I was at the Evangelical rally in Miami, and I was down there, and, and, the president not only asked in the back, um, um, a friend of mine that, that uh, um, Pastor R R um, Maldonado, and he's in the back, and it was his church, and Paula was going to be the one praying, and he and he said, "Well, I'll pray for me too to pray with us too." So he got to pray, and that that wasn't staged. That this that's just that's real prayers. And the president, I believe, he's the most praying president ever. I mean, having people pray for him for everything he's doing and everything and getting involved. He's in a he's in an amazing transformation. You know, I was put on the spot at the at the third debate in 2016, and on the I was in the spin room, and they this one media comes up, mad media attacking me and going, Mike, you always wear your cross. What do you think of what the president said on that? That was a that tape that they had that, and uh, and I said, well, you know what? I said I, I used to be an addict, and I said. I quit January 16, 2009, by the grace of God. And I said, I said, you know, I, I said, the things I did back then, I said, I've been in amazing transformation ever since. And I said, I met Donald Trump two months ago. And I said, the man I met wasn't that guy 11 years ago. I said, he must be in an amazing transformation too. And I said, do you know Phil Robertson read him the gospel? They took the microphone, ripped it out of my face and didn't even, of course, it was shut down. They always do that to me. The media, every time I tell them good things, they never print it or, or put it on TV. Wow. Wow. Well, what would you do with, um, like, let's say uh, we've got a lot of our Kurt Landry ministry partners here that are business owners. We've got people who are pastors. We've got people that 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 take a stand. They're in uh, leadership positions in companies, and uh, they're doctors and lawyers. We got people. Uh, we got people in Asia and China and all over the world that are uh, watching this broadcast tonight. What would you? How would you encourage them to follow that boldness that you've taken to be able to stand for righteousness? And to be able to to take this political stand, what what it what would be your advice to them? Well, my advice to them is listen to God, pray about what you're doing, and when you do, when you are proactive in your prayers, I my by me backing Donald Trump and going all in with God, what I know I was supposed to do from God, my busiest day at my pillow is the day we're in right now. I mean, I just keeps getting busier and busier and busier. Sure, and for me, I mean, I'm I'm a little different. I love the fight. I love the fight. I absolutely I, I enjoy it. I enjoy be doing what's right. That's the part I love about it. You know, because when you know you're right, everything else God will take care of the rest. And a businessman out there, anybody, everyone, here's what's going to happen this time around. You don't have to hide in the shadows anymore about both about Jesus or about the um, this election, voting for the president. I wear my cross boldly on TV even before I was saved, as you know, Rabbi. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I put it right out there because I wanted to be that guy. But I wasn't ashamed of believing in God, and I'm certainly not ashamed of having of surrendering to Jesus Christ. And and by putting it out there, and even I want to take the with all my with my platform to take the shame out of addiction. And uh, to speak out for Jesus and speak out for the best president we've ever had. There's no, I get, 
It's good. I get every day. What's what people can do it without fear. Now we are the majority. We are the majority. Um, you know, I really feel the president's going to win by four, you know, 48 states. I really do. I mean, how do you not vote for a guy that's done everything he said he's going to do? And God's chosen him for mm-hmm. such a time as this. And people say, oh, you know, he, he's got a Twitter and all this stuff. Let me tell you the best thing he did. God chose him to do one thing, smash political correctness. I don't think there's a guy out there that could have done it better than he did it. He had to do it because nothing else would have ever got done because we were stuck in this this place where, what, you can't say that, you can't do that, you can't do that, that's the wrong thing. You know, because he's a businessman, he thinks outside of the box, he knows, he knows what he's doing, and um, and uh, that's why, you know, God picks his leaders. I think that's in the Bible, isn't it, Rabbi, that God picks yes, his kings? Yes, it is. Yes, so it there is. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, we're called to be kings and priests. And people, say, well, and people say, I want people to know this, they say, well, then he picked Obama. Of course he did. Obama brought us Donald Trump. Just like addiction is going to bring us to Jesus, the biggest revival in history. You're looking for hope. Everybody's looking for hope. Mm-hmm. You know, and where is that hope? The hope is in Jesus. Yeah. You know, you and I have had uh, conversations about this and and not a lot of people agree with this this principle, but I know Mike and I personally do is that you your life is a series of stepping stones and in those stepping stones you might have to step into a situation, bad person, bad person, good, bad, bad, good. And if you try to avoid stepping into every bad situation because, oh, I'm a Christian, that's a bad situation, you're never, you're just one step away from stepping into the good. And the reason I'm saying that is Mike and I both, you know, we do business as well as Mike and ministry, but but there is a there is almost like a, a musical of it. It's bad, bad, good. <laughs> you know, it's like piano keys. There's white and black, and uh, there's, there's you're just going to have to learn how to. The key is, and I want to say this before I forget, the the key of what you're listening to right now is you. And I know this for a fact. You got to put your calling to do right above your cash, because what happens is sometimes you're going to do what's right. And then when you do, somebody's going to attack you and you're going to see your cash flow go down. And then you have to trust God and keep doing what's right. And then then you go up abundantly. The, the Lord is a very good accountant. The Lord keeps great books and the Lord always blesses and redeems and rewards the righteous. But uh, uh, but it's it's something that Mike, share a little bit about, you know, you're in a place where you're having to work with good and bad people to get your call and your message out. Speak to those who are trapped in that world that that don't want to step outside of that box. Share with them a little bit of advice. Well, I'm going to I'm going to before I forget too, I'm going to say our good friend Jack Brewer. Here's a guy that even with, that, you know, this ex, ex uh, NFL star and uh all the great things Jack had going, but he stepped out and he's going and he's speaking in prisons and stuff. And he was, he, he backed Obama and now, and then he flipped when he realized what was going on just this last weekend, he was with the president. When I was downstairs, he was upstairs and he made a comment. He said, Mr. President, you're the first black president we ever had. Now he was attacked for the last two days. You can look at the media. Just Slam in the media. Now yeah. Jack takes heat from it in his own neighborhood. He takes heat from everywhere. Being and uh, you know he just stands up for the Lord. And you're going to get pushback, but you know what? Jack gets rewarded every day. It's just like myself. I will, I will sit and like I say, it's like I'll be attacked by. Um, I'll uh, pick one. Uh, if you want to talk about internal, we'll be right back with you here. I'm sorry. This- this spiritual warfare. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, we break every assignment of the enemy against this broadcast, and we cut it off now in Yeshua's name. Lord, we just put angels around and about for protection and ministry. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for protecting the uh, signal and protecting our uh, our uh, broadcast tonight in Yeshua's mighty, mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're interviewing Mike Lindell at my pillow, so we're going to try to get Mike Lindell back. Well, the technology attack between our two ministries has always been at the highest level. Yes, seriously, anything we do, at House of David, CLM, my pillow, it's like get ready. So there's the demonstration. Well, we've we've got a lot about that. 
Well, I tell you what, Mike, we've got about 20, 18 minutes and I want to share something that I am so blessed and excited, especially, you know, uh, I always, I prophesied BB Netanyahu would be the next prime minister. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm not worried about the one vote that will all work itself out. And, and uh, uh, so we're going to have a secure government. So praise God that, uh, that Mike Lindell has partnered with us on a, a very great uh, partnership. Mike Lindell and uh, also Romero, Pastor Romero Pena, who is friends of ours together. In fact, Pastor Romero introduced me to Mike years ago at, or last year, a uh, year and a half ago at mar -a -Largo, where we were ministering. But in order to, uh, I'm gonna share a little bit about this because I, I just to kind of bring our, our group together. Mm -hmm. When, when I went down to Mar-a-Lago there at the Winter White House, uh, we were invited to an event and uh, Mike and Kendra were there, Christy and I were there, that's where we met. And we instantly kind of connected, you know, it was just like, hey, these are good people. And and uh, we made that connection. But one of the things that happened with me is that Pastor Romero and I and a few other pastors were called the day before Mike to go over and pray over the facility. They took us all over the place and we prayed and they served us breakfast. And at that time, I, I got to, I witnessed Baron with uh, Baron Trump, and he was with two security guys, and they were walking around the resort. They were there on quote vacation. Yeah, I'm watching him walk. So here's this teenage kid with these grown men. They're not paying any attention. They're watching the perimeter. He's trying to befriend them. Then we get ready to leave, and we see Ivanka, and she's got her kids and some of the cousins, and they're out like in that grassy area where they have like a little soccer field and things. And, uh, and I'm looking at my own daughter and my own grandchildren, the whole thing, the situation. And I'm going, man, these are billionaires that had everything they wanted. They could have been spent all their time just like, you know, enjoying life, enjoying vacation. And here they are at quote unquote, a vacation house. And all there is, is all these secret service people totally are surrounding them. And I mean, it hit me almost to the point of wanting to weep, Mike. I said, man, have they paid a price to save this nation? And, and the reward for it, for the most part, is slander, right. hatred, jealousy. And, and the, my biggest thing is like inside the church, you know, going off past behavior that, that is forgiven when you were born again, which I believe Donald Trump <laughs> is, all that type of stuff. Yep. And so anyway, I thought to myself, I have got to do something to bless this family. So then he moves the uh, embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And then he recognizes the sovereignty of the Golan Heights, really the most strategic high place in all of Israel and the whole world. Whoever controls the Golan controls the Middle East. And Donald Trump recognizes it. And then and, I, and immediately Netanyahu and his team say, listen, we're going to put on the hill uh, Trump Heights. We're going to thank him for that. And at the same time, then a friend of ours at the bottom of the hill said, listen, why don't we do a my olive tree grove and actually put like 500 trees and then 50, 90 year old trees, one for each state. People can sponsor them. And, and then what I what I could see, what I want to do is I want to get a, a lamb skin. A, a nice big lambskin, like, you know, like three foot by four foot and take the landskin and take, take and have an artist that knows how to do really good cal uh, calligraphy and take the names of every single person that has said to Donald Trump and his family, thank you. We honor you for what you're doing for Israel and the United States and have their name on it sponsored there. Then everything done in calligraphy, put it in a beautiful frame and then be able to have you and Romero go and, and, and make this presentation to the family. And uh, I mean, it means so much to us as Jewish people and for us connected to Israel, you know, 30 years working in Israel, the fact that he has recognized this, uh, I know the Jerusalem thing is big and everyone knows about that, but in the spirit, I can tell you recognizing Golan Heights is awesome. So first of all, I wanna thank you for standing with my family and standing with us to do this but um, I mean, what is, how do you think they're going to react to this gift from, from believers in the United States? And, uh, and I was gonna tell you, they're, they're doing a, a cover story got released this morning 
on the Peace Grove and this and the story of, of my life ending in Golan Heights and you and I partnering in Charisma Magazine. That actually got released this morning. Oh wow. And uh, but how do you think it's going to I mean, I, just as a man, I mean, do, do they get so much stuff that they're just gonna get another like frame thing with names and go, oh great, thank you, and put it in a in a storage building or what do you think it's going to mean for Jews and Gentiles coming together and just say, we love you. We honor you. And we say, thank you so much for all that you do. I think it's going to be absolutely the biggest blessing to them. And they, and let me tell you the president, the stuff he gets and his family, he appreciates each and everything I've had. Uh, I've been involved in a few other gifts that have been given to him and and um, in fact, I just uh, I just gave, gave got something to him uh, just two days ago. And every it doesn't matter how big or how small, he really needs to know he's being appreciated in the family because of all the attacks. And I think it's going to be one of the biggest blessings ever to them to know one of the biggest things they did moving that embassy and getting and uniting with Israel and getting having Israel's back means so much to everybody and. And I just think um, that he needs he, he, the president, the first lady, the whole family, just to just to keep you know, get, getting these confirmations. Like you just said, if they get attacked all the time, they had better things to do. And they are, I've never seen a stronger family, a stronger president. I mean, a, a guy is just a stronger man, and he's working nonstop. And to just know that keep his, like I told you before myself, when I get confirmations that God gives me, I'm on the right path. He needs those confirmations and the family does too. And I think this will be a big gesture to go to, uh, to bring that to him and to, um, to know that how much he's appreciated. I want to tell you, and you know, this goes right in line too. I told him, actually, I told the first lady, I said, you know, people come up to me. I told her this at new year's at new year's and, uh, I said, you know, people come up to me all the time, and the number one thing they say is, isn't about the pillow. They said, Mike, they talk, the first, I guess it's number two, the first thing they say, they say, we love your transformation, and, you know, the, and your story of hope or whatever, and, and thank you for praying for the president. I mean, thank you for being with the, you know, having the president's back and tell him we're praying for him. And that's what they, they say that all the time, so that just that, you know, doing this for him with what we're doing is going to just be that is everybody gets a chance to do that because they, they always say to me, could you give them this message? Could you give her this message? Could you give the family this message? We're praying for them. We're praying for them. And I just think this yeah, is going to this is going to say it in a huge way. Yeah. Well, I want to say this to you because I know your son's there and, uh, and some of your employees and your employees that are watching. Yeah. I want to show like, this is what the decision your dad, this is who your partners are on this project. Okay. So you've got the city of Jerusalem. You've got the Israel olive, uh, olive board. You have the uh, Israel ministry of agriculture and you got the Israel defense, the entire army of Israel, the defense forces are partnered with us. And now Mike Lindell. So, I mean, this is like, this. The, these are the hitters. I mean, this is what makes Israel go around. And your dad made a decision to stand with us. Uh, it's awesome. And, uh, and I wanna say this to you as well. I didn't ask anybody else to help us with this. I really felt like, uh, like you and I were to, to do this. There's no strings attached. We're not, you know, I'm just like, thank you. And, and the Lord bless you and the Lord bless your ministry and the Lord bless your business and your family. Because to, to recognize this in Israel, the Golan Heights, this is, a, this is a major thing. You know what? It's no accident that, that the day that they went up, David Freeman, the minister of uh, the uh, ambassador uh, to Israel, he's coming down in a car with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. They, they just dedicated the the Heights, the Golan Heights, the Trump Heights, they're driving down the hill. And when they do, they see us. We are literally having our team is there. They've got a large equipment and they're preparing for this olive grove. And they see it. And Netanyahu sees the man that works for us and Sam. And Sam and Netanyahu, the man that works for us, our director of operations there, they all grew up together, okay? 
So he sees Sam, he stops the car, he gets out of the car and he says, what are you doing? And he tells him about this project. And he said, this is beautiful. And uh, uh, so, uh, and he asked, he goes, whose trees are these? And, uh, and my name in Hebrew is Court, C-O-R-T. He says, these are Court's trees. He says, you tell Court, <laughs> you know, we've got over 30,000 trees planted all over. And he said, you tell him this is the most meaningful project that we've ever done. And, uh, and he wanted to send thanks to all of us. Wow. So this, this is an amazing thing. And, you know, we don't get a lot of time to, to do this. And, and really what's happening here is you see the two ministries are being used in the Hebrew. We call it a Kesha. We're being a bridge to bring the United States, the government of the United States, the United States of Israel together. And that's, a, that's really a, a high, high honor. I want to remind everybody that you can order your book. And uh, you need to go to mypillow.com. Uh, there you go. I like that face a little better. There, not there. We go. <laughs> <laughs> if you order, you get this face. If you don't order, this is what we think about you. Now that's pretty good, right there. Like that. <laughs> that was stupid, and we don't charge extra. But anyway, um, we want you to be able to go to mypillow.com and then go to my. Uh, what's the number? Promo code seventy yeah, seven. Mike 77, and you get free shipping it if you get the book, and your whole pie pillar will ship for free too. Then, if you get the book, the book will change okay. your life. The book will change your that, life. That's exciting. Well, Mike, we've got six minutes left. Tell me, uh, what, what, what's the last word? What, what do you think? What, what's going to happen here in 2020? Well, Donald Trump's going to win the election. Minnesota, he's going to win. He's going to win Minnesota. I, that I can tell you because I'm, I'm a part of that now. I'm leading that campaign, and he put me in charge. In fact, he just said on national TV, he said, "Now if we lose, we're going to blame it on Mike." <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that one before. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't lose. Well, I'm supporting you on that too, so you can. I'll, you, I'll take part of the blame. All right, that sounds great. But I'm going to do I'm going to do revival rallies all over Minnesota. One of the things that I that I enjoy doing is I just did one in Michigan and uh, I went there and spoke. It was a it was a, a mini Trump rally. It was Battle Cry 2020 and I and I I went there and I draw people I want people to come from both Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives. I want them all to come and hear this message you know, of hope that I have with addiction and how I came out of addiction and where I'm at and how I learned about politics. It's kind of coming from a blank slate. And and then I want to, and then we'll give them a, pull them into, and, you know, pull them over and say, hey, you know, hey, you guys, look at, look at around you, you know, tell them how it affected their own life and, uh, you know, give them the promises kept, promises made, promises kept.com. And there's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be a lot busy because I'm launching my recovery network about the same time. That's going to help. I believe millions of addicts are going to be brought back to Jesus and, and to the church. This isn't about just about getting people off of it, out of addiction. It's about bringing people to Jesus. And this is the big revival we're in. We are in the, this is, this is, there's no time, better time in history to be alive, to be part of this revival and everything that's going on now. I mean, People, um, if you're when you talk about this election, to vote, we used to, when we voted for Donald Trump before we went on faith. Now we have proof of concept, and hopefully for decades to come, with um, with how a government should be run, not to have your own political agenda, but to be for the people and to be and anyone out there that's you know with our Christian values, all you've got to do. I don't care. Look at the like for me. There was a Republican came up to me last election and said, "Mike, will you will you help me out with a donor event?" I said, "Absolutely not. You're pro-choice." And I said, uh, "I said," and he goes, "No, I'm in the middle." I said, "There is no middle." And I said, That's right. "Here would be the headlines: Mike Lindell goes against his Christian values to back a Republican." All you know, all you got to do is look at your own, look at your, look at Donald Trump, look at where he's at, look at the politicians or the. The, uh, you know, look who's out there and say, okay, where do my biblical principles line up? Where do I line up with this? Well, I know for me, it was all right in one spot. It's, you know, and um, and then it just manifests into our daily lives. And and I, um, I'm i excited for my book being out now. It's going to help, I believe, so many people that everyone that's read it says it's, uh, 
you know, you could tell I tried, took me seven years to write. <laughs> I was so particular about every little line in the book, every little phrase, every, you know. Um, and by the way, I want people to know, um, you know, it's not it's not full of a bunch of swear words just because I was an addict. Um, and they, uh, this is a PG-13 book, you know. Um, <laughs> well, you know, a lot of I want a lot of teenagers to read it, too, to give them hope where I was, where I didn't have any self-worth. And I didn't have any inside of me where I was, I felt, you know, ashamed. I felt uh, I had done things I was ashamed of. So I just used used uh, addictions to block that. I, I didn't feel I was worthy, didn't feel I fit in. And and this book is for everyone out there that has ever had those feelings. And, and you know, to get uh, to get back and get forgive yourself and say, you know, and, um, and put it all on Jesus. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, Mike, we've only got two minutes left. One of the things I want to do, I want to go on the record and uh, uh, with this is our friend Jack Brewer. He's been accused of being an Uncle Tom by some of the fake news. Yeah. And I want to say this as somebody who was, was raised in Los Angeles for 18 years uh, from 1955 to about 1973. For those of us who know what an Uncle Tom is, Jack Brewer, knowing him, is the exact opposite of that slang derogatory yeah. term. He is yeah. not. A Tom is one that's used by white people to hurt his own people. And yeah. Jack Brewer has a bridge to white people to help the black people. Yeah. And he's a great man of God and I honor him. So I just kind of wanted to go on the record to correct that. Uh, that's, that's, that's not fair because he really is an apostolic father to the African-American community and he's a bridge for the hope for the white people to be able to understand that community so that we can work together in unity. And like I say, he's your friend and our, we're both all friends. I just wanted to say that for the record uh, because we do stick up for our friends. Yeah. And uh, and the thing is, it's, it's the truth. Yeah, but absolutely. Mike, I wanna thank you so much for uh, investing this time. And uh, I wanna thank my pillow for uh, helping us and, uh, uh, and all your staff that's there have been so gracious to us. I thank your son for helping us tonight with this broadcast. I think I'm, I, we're down in Florida. We're finishing our vacation. My daughter, Megan, and Paul helping us here. No. And so uh, we're just going to go out. Do you have, you have one more thing, and then we're going to pray. What's that? I said, do you have one more thing you want to say, and then we'll pray? Okay. Yeah. No. I just, I just want to say it's, you know, it's been great to be on the show, and I just want to tell you, um, when you talked about Jack Brewer, we were all at the White House for that Black History Month, and I'll tell you, that it was full at the White House, and the president, I can tell you, he did, he did it not for any. Um, there could have been no media there, and he still does these things. People don't realize all the things he's doing to help people, to help everyone. And, they, you know, it's like some of the stuff I could sit and list on the show over and over and over again. That's what it means. It's real. He has no other agenda other than to help each and every one of us. Yeah. Well, I know Dr. Alveda King's there. She's a friend of yeah. our ministry, a personal friend. And there's others. And, and I... In, in my years, I've never been more hopeful to see the unity and the healing coming between the African-American community and the other communities. And uh, same thing we're seeing with Ramiro in the Latino community. And, and we're seeing people stand with Israel and the Jewish community. This is the greatest time of ever. unity ever, ever in don't our lives. And fake, don't believe any fake news. This is the uniting when we're all coming together. It's happening now. You can yes, go, you know, and pretty soon you get more and more coming together and going pretty soon. There'll be just those two or three people that have the loudest voices that are sitting out there. The only thing they have right now is the, is the fake news and the media. Once that's gone, you go, you know, if they were gone, we'd all go, wow, this is the best time ever. We're all united. You know? <laughs> yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I wanted uh, all our uh, viewers tonight Go ahead, too, and go to Charisma Magazine, the digital copy. They have a story on there about the Peace Grove, if you want to know more about that project and more about the ministry. But I'm going to go ahead, and uh, we want to thank Mike Lindell for sharing us with this time, and I just want to close in prayer. Father God, we do come to you in Yeshua's name. We pray blessings over Mike Lindell and, and over all my pillow and the, and the Recovery Network and, and my, Mike Lindell Ministries. 
Lord, we thank you so much for the business mountain to being a voice in this critical time. Thank you, Lord, for blessing Donald J. Trump, our president and the administration, blessing Melania and the family. Lord, blessing all those who are have uh, helped us tonight. Lord, bless this Peace Grove in the Golan Heights. Bless this project to be a blessing, to be able to send this great thank you gift to the Trump family as well. And Lord, and bless all those who are listening and watching tonight. And we just thank you for all of them. And we bless them in Jesus' mighty name, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Anyway, God bless you. Yep, thank you so much for making time. Yep, thank you all. God bless. God bless you guys. Shalom.